this is the world premiere of my new story called Me and Two Guys. Yeah. I got this old 74 Dodge pickup I call Creamsicle. Of course, she's orange and white. I put her up for sale in the driveway with a sign on the windshield advertising 500 bucks, a real bargain. That's how I meet two guys. He bangs on my kitchen door and says, hey, I'm your new neighbor, Dwight. I go by two guys, or TG for short. You can call me anything, but don't call me late for dinner. And he laughs. I can tell he thinks that old cornball line's really funny. He offers out his hand. You really think you're gonna get 500 bucks for that old whore of a pickup truck? I said, hell yeah. She got air conditioning, power steering, good rubber, a cassette player, and an FM radio. He says, don't look like she'd hold up on a day's worth of hard work. I'll give you 250 cash. He pulls out two Genesis from the six pack he's toting under his arm, hands me one. Pops it, takes his wigs, and stares at me quiet and hard. That broke old camper on the back's gonna take some doing to get off. Well, give me 400 cash and I'll help you get it off here and now. We stand silent for a bit, pondering, till the beer is done. He tosses his can over his shoulder onto the lawn, yanks off two more beers, hands me one, saying, 375 sounds like a fair deal to me. If I can leave that piece of shit camper top here, a handshake seals the deal. Two guys, he's six foot five, could probably kill a horse with one punch. He was raised hard, works hard, and don't talk much. His family calls him two guys, cause on any kind of farm work, he's always done the work of two men. He did two hitches in the Air Force. And then came back to live near the farm where he grew up. We've been best buds for a lot of years now. Early on at a neighbor's barn party, TG and I whipped out a mini keg of Bud Light in a pretty short time. I told him, hey, I got a case of Jenny over at my place, it's cold. He says he's hungry, so why don't we stop by my cabin, pick up the beer, head over to his new double wide, and grill some of them red hot glacier hot dogs he's got. He just brought them down from upstate. He's a long haul trucker. We hop in Creamsicle and off we go. Our new friendship is Chris and Genesee Cream Ale and Glacier Park Hot Dogs. He and I get together at least once a week to do a little yard work, talk about time in the military, and drink a lot of beer. Sometimes we drive over to a juke joint on 55 outside Ellenville. No signs, no parking lot, no windows. Just a surly old country gal barkeep and a loud shit-kicking jukebox. I still haven't learned yet that at 5 foot 8, ain't no way I can hold the same amount of beer as TG without getting really shit-faced. Being a wise-ass drunk, I usually manage to piss off somebody in the joint. And I only remain unpunched because TG's got my back and he's big enough to scare off most challengers. Our drinking motto tends to be, yeah, see, we seem like nice guys, but if you hang with us around us long enough, we'll piss you off. And that's pretty much what we do. Driving home drunk ain't much of an issue with us. Mostly two named black tops along farmland. And TG Trackner drove these roads since he was 10. No traffic, no people. Worst that can happen is we run off the road into a hayfield and fall asleep. After the afternoon at the juke joint, we're at TG's place. He's out back getting cold beer from the shed. I'm in the bathroom trying to take a pee. Drunk and feeling dizzy, I'm bracing myself up with my hand on the wall above the toilet. Close my eyes for a second and my arm slips. I fall forward, elbow hit the top of the toilet tank, knocking the lid off into the bathtub where it breaks into two big pieces. Leaning over to pick him up, damn if I don't fall into the tub, landing on my shoulder. As TG comes in with two beers, I turn on my back looking up, laying there with my fly still open, laughing like a hyena. He pulls down the toilet seat, sits, hands me a beer, and stoically says, I expect you'll be putting in a new toilet tomorrow. TG cuts a long snowmobile trail back to his place with a machete and a chainsaw. He would thick goods around a lake to a really run-down farm boy bar at the road waves. Wintertime, we snowmobile there on weekends, stomp our feet to country music, drink a lot of Jennies, and shoot some pool if Chubby ain't fucking the bartender on the pool table. Sporting a good buzz, we usually end up deciding to race around a lake at 70 miles an hour or more in minus 10 degree weather or worse. You gotta be pretty fucked up to think that's a good idea. 
Tonight, Gigi invites a very drunk Trophy to ride with him to add some weight to his machine as a handicap, since he mostly beats me when we race. She agrees, and we're flying around that freaking lake side by side at warp speed. Chubby has to keep her big legs spread real wide to straddle the machine, and TG don't notice when we cut a tight curve around a close boat dock. Chubby's knee hits a guide pole at the end of the boat dock, knocking her off the machine at high speed and leaving a good chunk of her kneecap somewhere over there near the, near the dock. She falls hard and slides fast on the ice, and about halfway across the lake. Coming her up on her, she's laughing real hard because she's too shit-faced to feel any pain at this point. TG slings her over his shoulder, dumps her behind him on the machine, heads off to the ER. Kind of sobered me up right then and there, quick, and I ride home alone. TG shows up at my place a couple hours later, smiling, looking none the worse for wear. Says Chubby thought it was a real hoot. The docs patched her up okay. She'll be off the crutches in a month. Won't affect her job over at the prison either, since she mostly sleeps on her midnight to eight anyhow. Over the course of the summer and fall, TG builds up a monster pile of brush and dead branches in the open field behind the trailer. Come February, most everybody's getting cabin fever. TG invites a bunch of us local good old boys over for a Saturday afternoon burn. Generally about five or ten below zero, so it's Carhartt canvas bib fronts and jackets, long johns, wool t-shirts, Elmer foot hats, and bottles of brandy. We all back our pickups in a half circle around the burn pile and tailgate, sipping brandy, while TG throws a couple or three gallons of good old UMO, that's used motor oil, serves on many purposes, on that big brush pile and he fires it up. Nothing like a good winter burn with the boys to blow off cabin fever for a bit. We take it slow and easy on the brandy and the talk, mostly recounting and laughing on the crazy shit we do. TG don't talk much, tag, tag, tucks on his pint, nods his head a lot, and smiles. We sit and stare at the big fire until sundown. The Great Escape is a low-slung, long cabin bar on a heavily wooded lot on Route 52, a ways down from the prison on the other side of town. Correction officers finishing a shift up at 4 p.m. or midnight, they head directly over to unwind from a tense and always unpleasant day of prison work. Not much difference between them and the prisoners, except they get to go home for a little bit every day. Bar opens at 3 p.m. seven days a week, and there's a continuous loud and raucous party till last call at 4 a.m. With pretty young go-go dancers, loud music, cheap booze, and always a couple good-looking hookers hanging out for a quick service call in the parking lot for a fair price, too. TG and I love the joint and go there occasionally to party with the off-duty guards. Mostly neighbors who live nearby, some friends of TG from school days. I'm only allowed a six-pack of beer there by TG. Knowing my strong urge to be a wise-ass when drunk, he has no desire to be defending me against a bunch of drunken prison guards with guns. We party, have fun with the ladies and friends, and always leave before I make a scene. The trees along Route 42 across from my cabin are heavily marked with scars from collisions by cars driven by drunken prison guards falling asleep at the wheel and sideswiping trees and rolling over into the field a six-foot drop from below the road. State troopers or sheriffs answer the calls, arrange for ambulances and tow trucks when necessary, but never report the accidents or arrest the drivers because they're looking out for their own. It could be them next time. After years of complaints by wives and prison officials, the Great Escape is busted for prostitution and closed for good, remaining empty and derelict, a testament to bad choices and good parties. Whenever I drive by, I can't help recalling the gals, the music, the good times with TG and our neighbors at the Great Escape. As the years go by, TG and I are getting older and crankier. We slow down a bit on the drinking and the crazy shit, but we're still best buds. We have we hang out weekends in our garage, drinking beer and shooting the shit, pretending we're fixing a tractor or a lawnmower or something. Creamsicle's long gone now, replaced by a big red flashy four-door tundra. Me, I'm driving a shiny new silver SR5 with big wheels, a brush guard, CD player, and a rear window rack for my Stetson and my Winchester.
arthritis and old age are kept up with us too. TG got a bum knee and a good sized beer gun on him. Me, I'm blind in one eye, mostly deaf, and limp like a lame plow horse. We breakfast a lot of Tilly's, stop by the old farm bar once in a while, have a few jetties, listen to Hank and George Jones on the juke, and shoot some eight ball if nobody's fucking on the pool table. Thank you.